In this video, we're going to be going through how to take a 3D part that you've drawn in Inventor Pro and turn it into a detailed drawing that looks like this. Let's get started. Okay, so the next step is create a new part in Inventor. Take a moment and draw this sketch. You can see the dimensions, 100 millimeters here, 15 millimeters here, 40 millimeters there, and 50 millimeters there. Feel free to pause the video while you create that. Okay, let's finish that sketch and extrude it. Let's extrude that part. Now I don't like this view, so I'm gonna hit the, uh, the home button here so I can look at it from the side. I want to extrude that 50 millimeters. Hit okay. Next step, I wanna create a hole in the space and we're going to use the hole command. But before you use the hole command, I have to give it a point to draw the hole from. So I'm going to start a 2D sketch, click on that face. Same thing again. I'm going to twist this click, left click, and twist a little bit until I get a better view. I like a slightly 3D view when I'm doing this stuff. Next step, I'm going to project geometry because I am working on this face. When I project that, now I've got those edges. They're now inside my sketch. I am going to make a point. I'm at that point right about there. Put it roughly in the right spot. And then we're going to dimension it to the exact right spot. So I'm going to click dimension. I'm going to go to that point and the side here. I'll drag the dimension up here. I want it 25 millimeters away from that edge. I'm going to do the same thing with that point and this top edge right here. And I want that also to be 25 millimeters. I've got my point for my hole, perfect. Finish that sketch. Okay, let's use our hole command to create that hole. So I'm gonna go up here to the hole command, click on that. It automatically picks the spot that I created. And let's change some of the options in here because that's not quite what I want. First thing I want, we're gonna use a counterboard hole and that's what's been already been picked. I want to make a 25 millimeter diameter counterbore. So I'm type in 25. I want that counter bore to go down five millimeters. Now I've got that hole that goes down five millimeters. I want the diameter of that bottom hole, the hole that goes all the way through, to be 12 millimeters. That makes it a little larger. And the last thing is I actually want the hole to go all the way through. So I'm going to pick this button that says through all. Now I've got a hole that goes all the way through. That looks about right. So hit OK. Let's go back to the home view. Yeah, that looks like what we want. Next step, I'm going to round off these corners with a fillet. So we'll go up here to the fillet command. I'm going to pick this corner and that corner. And I want to use a 15 millimeter fillet for that. So I click on radius, 15. Got a lot much larger fillet now. Perfect. Hit OK. Next step is I want to cut a channel on that face right here. So I'm going to start another 2D sketch. Click that face for the sketch. I'm going to click this and just give it a little bit of a, a shift like that. I want to project geometry again, so I want to make sure this whole face shows up in the sketch so I've got something to reference my lines off of. And I'm going to use a shortcut. I'm going to use a rectangle. So make sure your first click actually is on the line there, not close, but directly on. And pull out a rectangle like that. Let's dimension that rectangle. So this face, I want that to be 20 millimeters. This depth right here, I want that to be 10 millimeters. And the last step, the distance between this line and that line, I want to be 7.5 millimeters. That looks about right. Finish that sketch. And let's use extrude to cut that out. So I'm going to click on the extrude. Didn't automatically select my, my profile, so I will select this profile right here. Now, right now, that is giving me extruding, adding a solid on, but that's not what I want. I want to cut. So I'm going to go here to take the cut operation. Now it's cutting, but it didn't go far enough. I want to go all the way through. I'm going to click through all. If I look from this side, Yep, that goes through the whole thing. Perfect. Hit OK. Yep, 
that's the shape I want. The last thing I need to do before creating a drawing is I need to save this. I'm going to go up here to the disk, click Save. I'm going to save it as detail drawing number one. Wherever you save it, make sure you know where this is. I'm going to click Save. Yes, I want to replace it in my case. And I'm ready to move on. Let's go to the home. I'm going to start a new drawing. Automatically brings up this basic template. Now the problem with this template, it is printing it on a size D sheet, a large sheet of paper. And we're going to do this on an 8.5 and, and 11, a standard piece of paper. I'm going to right click on sheet and I want to edit sheet right here. Size D, C, 22 inches by 34 inches, much bigger than your standard paper. I'm going to go up here to size A, and size A is 8.5 by 11. That's your standard piece of paper. Hit OK. Next problem, this title block here is from the large sheet of paper, so it's actually too large for the paper we're using. Now, in a later video, I'm going to show you how to create a custom title block so it's got everything you need in it, but that's a later video. So that's this title piece right here. This title block is too big, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete that. It's gone. I'm going to go up to Drawing Resources, hit the plus on the side, go over here to Title Blocks, hit that plus, and I want that ANSI A. Right click and insert. And that gives me a much smaller title block that fits better on my page. Here, right, let's insert our part. I'm going to go up here to the Place Views tab. I'm going to click on Base. And what that does is it brings up the last part I was working on. Now, if it, this isn't the part that you want in your drawing, you can go under here and Files and select the file that you want in your drawing. I can click on this view and I can move it around. Let's move it to the bottom left-hand corner. A couple other things here. You can change your scale. There's lots of different options, or you can type a custom one in. But one-to-one -one fits nicely on this drawing. And I want a couple more views of it as well. I'm going to click on this arrow, bring that side view. I'm going to click on this arrow at the top to bring a top view. And last but not least, I want an isometric view. So I'm going to click on this corner arrow. Let's bring that view right there. Now it's not fitting nice, but we will play with that in a minute to get it to, to fit on the page. I'm good with that. Now to get it to stay on the screen, I'm going to right click and hit OK. The enter key would work as well. All right, so let's deal with this isometric view first. I'm going to double click on it. And we're not actually going to dimension off of this. All I need is essentially a pretty picture up in the corner so you can see the 3D view of what you're making. I'm going to go down here to scale. And I want it to be one half the size of the, of the actual size. If I click on one half, it automatically scales it down. That's perfect. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag it into the, about the right spot. And the next thing I want is I actually want it to show up in this shaded view. Not just lines like this one over here, but I want that shaded view. It looks a little nicer. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to click on the shaded icon or the, the icon here for shaded. So it's going to show up with the, with the hidden lines removed and shaded. So I can click on two of these. Once I'm happy, hit OK. Now I've got that view. One of the nice things with working with this program to create these detailed drawings is this part file is linked to the drawing. So if I go back into my part file and I make a change, it will automatically show up on my detailed drawing. Let's, let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go back into my part file. There's my part. I'm going to actually add a chamfer on this corner. Chamfer. Click on that line right there. It's got a little corner. That's not big enough. Let's do a 20 millimeter chamfer. So it really knocks a bunch of that corner off. I'm going to hit apply. Close that down. I've changed my part. I'm going to save this. I just hit the save button. It remembers where I saved it last time. Now, when I go into that detailed drawing, 
it automatically updated that part to show up with that new change on my drawing. So as you're working with things, if you change them, your detailed drawing will automatically update itself. Let's add some dimensions on here. To add dimensions, I'm going to go up here to Annotate, Tab, and Dimension. Dimensioning here looks, works very much like dimensioning does in a sketch. So I want to dimension the distance between there and there. Bring that down, that's 100 millimeters. I want the dimension between here and here. That should be 50 millimeters. I want this one. If I click on that, bring it up. 40 millimeters. I want this dimension right here. I'm going to click on the line right there. That's a 15 millimeter dimension. Let's move to this one up here. Let's dimension a couple things with that hole. Let's start with the center of the hole. As I bring it in here, I end up getting a dot for the center of the hole. I'm going to click on that. And I want this edge up here, so it's going to bring it up here. There's a 25 millimeter dimension right there. And I'm going to dimension that hole from this edge. But now what you have to be careful of, I'm going to zoom in and look at that. If I click on here, sometimes if you're zoomed out, it might want to click on the end of that dimension. But that is not the center of the hole. I have to make sure I've actually selected the center of the hole, not the end of that dimension line. I'll click there, click on that edge, bring that out. So I've got 25 millimeters there. Let's zoom so we see the whole thing again. Okay, that looks good. Next step, I want to dimension these circles. Let's start with this one right here. That's got a radius of 12. Do this one right here. I'll bring it down below. That's got a radius of 25. Last but not least, we want this fillet right here, and that's got a radius of 15. A couple more things to dimension. Let's talk about this box right here. I want that line to have a dimension of 20 millimeters. And I want this line to have a 7.5 millimeter dimension. I want dimension from here to here. 10 millimeters. I don't like where that's showing up. Let's bring it up here. And then I want this length right here to be 30 millimeters. A little awkward and tight, but we'll make it work. I need to show how deep this counter bore is. I'm going to go from there to there. Say so that's a 5 millimeter deep counter bore. And that should be enough dimension to be able to draw this part. Last thing we want to do is fill out a couple of parts, a couple of things in this title block. To do that, we're going to go up to File, I Properties, General. We have a couple of things here. Let's go to Summary, Title, Detail, Drawing, Number One. Put your name and the author. You put your company name or your school, in my case it's North Battleford Comprehensive High School. Apply, close. Notice how the title fills out in here. My company name goes right here, and I filled a few things out there. Save your file, and you have a detailed drawing. You want to print it, go up to File, print right there.